Okay, I'm going to um, talk a little bit about the dynamic balancer. I get a lot of questions about this, probably more so than anything else in the videos. Um, where did you get it? What does it cost? Do you have plans for it? Can I build one? And so forth. Uh, yeah, this is one of a couple of them that I have that I've built. This is the smaller one. Uh, I do not have plans. I will not make plans available. I don't sell these. Uh, the reason that I don't um, have plans or sell plans is because I don't advocate people building these. It's not a do-it-yourself project. They're uh, very dangerous. Uh, you can, because if you have a, dependent upon how heavy the pieces you're trying to balance, if it comes off of there, it comes off of the carriage, it starts wandering around, it could hurt you or anybody who's nearby, maybe even your neighbor, if, if dependent upon how heavy the piece is and how fast you're spinning it when it takes a walk. So um, <clears throat> very few people really have a need for dynamic balancing. Uh, one of the ways that you can avoid having to balance things um, is, and I'll give you an example of it. Here's what you see, there's lots of different adapters and so forth to put various size things on this. Uh, here's a, a, a new adapter that's for the Ultra, some of the parts on the Ultra. Uh, one side is for a, a ring that supports the disc rotor. Other side is for the uh, threaded uh, shaft, threaded collar in the back. And you can see here that there's a, a hole in it that has a set screw in it. So wouldn't that logical question would be, well, won't that throw it off balance? And then it's a waste of time to try to balance anything with it. That's not necessarily the case. If you're doing something like this at home, the way to uh, the way to not disturb the balance. I mean, intrinsically, this round piece of aluminum is going to be balanced. The only reason it would be not balanced is if there's difference in density and so forth. So maybe there's some offshore material that would have that problem. But basically, it's, it's going to be balanced uh, reasonably well for uh, any normal operation that you might want to put it to. But as soon as you start drilling holes in it, now it's going to be out of balance. So do you have to take it and spend? 120 to 200 dollars to have somebody dynamic balance this because that's that's what it costs to have things balanced um, uh, in order to restore the balance. And you don't. What you do is you calculate. You know how big this hole is in here, and you calculate the amount of aluminum, the weight of the aluminum that you've removed, and then you calculate the weight, or you can actually weigh. The set screw that you're putting back in. Obviously, this set screw is steel and it's much, much smaller than the amount of aluminum that was taken out of there, but it weighs the same. So, uh, and of course, it depends on whereabouts the, the, the um, set screw is. Yeah, if it's toward the outside, it's going it's to have more of an effect than if it's toward the inside, uh, the, or the difference in the material mass. So, also, if you want to put something in this little uh, tidbit. If you want to put something on a shaft like this and you don't want to mar the shaft, grind the uh, teeth off of the set screw so, so it doesn't mar up the shaft. So here we go. I'm going to put this back on here. And just snug it a little. Well, before I do that, let me just say this. If you are bound to determine to build your own balancer, here's, here's the important aspects of it. What you need basically is you need a, this is called a floating carriage. You can see it's on, it's on ball bearings, it's suspended, and that shaft is free to move back and forth. Now, it's, it's contained, it can't move very far, but of course you don't want it to. But it's going to move that far, so far out of balance that you, you don't want it to be around it anyway. Uh, these screws are to keep that bearing where it belongs. There's also a different set of bearings in here for, for larger items. The drive belt. The drive belt wants to come straight down off each side of this pulley, as straight as reasonably doable. And the reason is because if you pull it to the side, you're going you're to influence the balance. So you don't want to do that. You want to just come straight down like that. And, uh, and, and, and then in the back of the, in the back, you have to put an uh, absolute encoder. And this electronics are off of this right now, but the, let, let, you have an absolute encoder back here. And then on this carriage, you mount uh, accelerometers. So the way that it works, basically, and then you have software. Now you can either write your own software, or you can get some really nice pre-written software for about $2,000. That's just for the software to, to run the balancer. 
Uh, the, the way this works is the imbalance moves this carriage. The accelerometer measures the movement, detects the movement, and, and can also measure the movement. And the, uh, so in other words, the accelerometer knows that this is off to, to that side right now. And right now, you collect off of the absolute encoder. So you know how much is out of balance and you know where the out of balance exists because of the encoder. You also, of course, you can read the RPM as well. So those are the main features. You have to have a floating carriage. You have to have an appropriate drive that's arranged the right way. And then you have to have uh, an encoder. And you have to have uh, accelerometers. And you have to have software. So those are the, those are the pieces of any, any dynamic balancer. So we're going to stick this guy back on here. And rev him up to see if he's actually balanced or not. That looks pretty good to me. So now here's one of the victims. It's going to go through the balancing process. This is the, this is the locking ring. It goes on the back of the uh, spindle. It's threaded. It's got, you know, th this wouldn't bother to balance. It's got three holes. They're equal. But here's, here's the killer, is this clamp. That, that just makes a complete mess out of the balance. So let's stick this guy on here, see how bad he really is. Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't matter whether it's on perfectly straight, because that doesn't affect the balance. So we'll snug him up so that he doesn't have a tendency to try to walk off of there. But we're not going to be able to run him very fast at all. We'll watch that floating carriage and see if it doesn't tell us something. All right, so not rocket science. That guy is way out of balance. If I tried to rev it up, it would, do, it would tear up the machine really fast. So uh, you, you start off with a rough balance, and then you can spin it up fast enough to get a fine balance on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do that, put the electronics back on here, do that, and I'm gonna come back and show you, the, show you this same part balanced for 4,000 RPM operation. Okay, we're back after the balancing, and you can see the, uh, the drilled holes in here. You can balance one of two ways, you can add uh, weight to the light side, or you can take weight off of the heavy side. Uh, this is a steel part, so it's um, doable, but it's not really practical to add heavy metal to one side, so you just take weight off of it. Now, let's see how we did. There you go, dynamic balance. Here's something a little bit scarier. It's a rotor. So, they're tricks. There it is. <laughs>